A Russian missile struck near Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's motorcade in the city of Odessa. The president was in Odessa to meet Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis when the incident happened. The strike landed a short distance from his motorcade, which was traveling to meet a Greek delegation that included the country's Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, according to Greek news outlet Protothema. We saw this strike, said Zelensky. You see who we are dealing with, they do not care where they hit. I know there were casualties today, I don't know all the details yet, but I know there are dead and wounded, he added. Mitsotakis, in turn, noted that at the time of the explosion he was with the Ukrainian president at the port. We were at the port. President Zelensky and his team explained to us the importance of the port and told us what was being done to restore it. In particular, we saw what damage was done to the port by attacks. At the end of the visit, we heard an air raid siren and loud explosions near us. This is an impressive experience, we understand that this war affects everyone and spares no one," Mitsotaka said. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen condemned on X, what she called the a vile attack during the Greek visit. She called it a new attempt at terror by Russia. Делегации, шановные журналисты, дорогая Одесса. Перед всем я хочу подякувати вам, пане премьер-министре, та усі кейси. Подякувати за допомогу нашій державі. Finland must have a nuclear deterrent. The new president of Finland, Alexander Stubb, said this. Finland must have a nuclear deterrent. NATO, of which we are a member, provides us with three deterrents. The first is the military, the second is missiles, ammunition, and the third is nuclear weapons from the United States, he said. When asked about his views on nuclear weapons at his first news conference as president, Stubb said it would be for the Finnish government and parliament to decide if Finland wants to alter its current legislation that bans nuclear weapons on Finnish soil including their transfer. It should be noted that even during his candidacy, Stubb did not rule out the deployment of nuclear weapons on the territory of Finland if the parliament changes the legislation. At his official inauguration in parliament, Stubb said he stood ready to oversee a new era after Finland joined NATO in response to neighboring Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We are now facing a new era. As a result of our military alignment and NATO membership, we have taken the final step into the Western community of values, where our republic has spiritually belonged throughout its independence," Stubb said in his address to Parliament during the inauguration. Accession to NATO was a significant step in a new direction for Finland. In the wake of the Cold War, Finland was one of the few countries in Europe not to abandon and dismantle its national defense capability to pursue a peace dividend. With the country's history of invasion and experience from World War II and its 1,340-kilometer-long border with Russia, an awareness of proximity to possible conflict is omnipresent in Finnish culture. Ukrainian want to find chat helps Russian families find soldiers who were captured or killed. Almost two years into Russia's invasion, with Moscow's losses estimated by Kyiv at more than 400,000 soldiers, the Ukrainian authorities launched a project called Want to Find to help Russian citizens find information about their relatives who went to fight in Ukraine. According to ABC News, the launch came as a follow-up to the Want to Live project a hotline offering the Russian soldiers a way to surrender. Since that launch in September 2022, operators of the project received more than 32,260 Russian soldiers were admitted as prisoners of war, according to the organization. Some even joined the so-called Russian Volunteer Corps, which is fighting against Russian forces alongside the Ukrainian army. The number of requests soared in autumn 2022 during the announcement of a mobilization in Russia and successful Ukrainian counter-offensive in the Kharkiv region and Kherson, and in spring last year when the Ukrainian authorities were announcing the much-anticipated counter-offensive. That's when many Russians started to reach out to the Want to Live project in search of their relatives who went to war and never returned, according to Vitaly Matvienko, the spokesperson of the I Want to Live project.
People, mostly women, called and asked whether we knew something about their husbands or sons, whether they were captured or killed. Because the Russian authorities didn't provide them with any information, Matt Vienko told ABC News. Since last summer, they've got more than 3,000 such requests and decided to launch a separate Telegram bot for processing them. Through it, the customers provide all the data they have, names, photos, any distinguishing features the person has, like tattoos or scars. The operators on the Ukrainian side run this data through several databases and tell them whether the person is killed, captured, or there's no information at all. Germany admits fears of Ukraine potentially firing Taurus missiles at Moscow. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has reiterated his disapproval of donating Taurus missiles to Ukraine. The head of the German government spoke during the so-called public dialogue in Dresden. This time, Scholz's argument to back his stance was the idea that the German-made missiles could potentially be launched at targets in Russia's capital, Moscow. A Taurus with the 500-kilometer range may hit some specific target in Moscow if used incorrectly. The politician said, Scholz added, with all diplomatic abstractness, others also took care of being aware of exactly where weapons landed. In Germany's case, it would imply involving German missile programming experts to make sure that missiles don't fly toward the wrong targets, Scholz claimed. Earlier, the German chancellor has repeatedly stated that German missiles are a much more complex system than British and French ones. I believe it would be impossible. From the very beginning, I clearly said there will be no German NATO soldiers in Ukraine and my position remains unwavering. The head of government emphasized. Scholz stressed that NATO and individual allies must not become a party to the conflict. We will prevent escalation. The war between Russia and NATO, the politician emphasized. He also admitted he was annoyed by criticism of him refusing to donate Taurus missiles to Ukraine as many forget that Germany has been sending much more than others, that it is currently the second largest arms supplier for Ukraine, and if the US Congress fails to allocate more money, Germany will champion the list. The Chancellor has listed numerous weapons systems Germany has sent among other partners including tanks, MLR systems, air defense capabilities and more.